the little first grand secretary in my house. Chapter 8 and 9. He was dressed in a signed tart coat, as if he hadn't seen the sun for a long time, and his skin was pale, and he looked very thin, but his expression was very leisurely. Although he was dressed in shabby clothes, the village path was also very uneven, and there were even cow shit and chicken shit on the road, it seemed that he was strolling. It was time for spring plowing, everyone was busy plowing, and few people could be seen on the road in the village. Occasionally some women were sewing in the yard and saw the man walking on the road from a distance. They all looked intently for a few times before they recognized who he was. Gauzy, where are you going? Zhu Tingxiang looked at the woman who was talking to him, smiled and said, Auntie, I just take a stroll. She just said casually and did not say any more to him, and turned into the room to get her things, and the mother in law in the room asked her, The third child's wife, who did you just talk to? The child of Zhu Liangxing's second wife. Hey, mother, it's strange that he passed by the door just now, but I didn't recognize him for a moment. I always felt that he was different from what he used to be. Right double quotation mark. Her mother in law disagreed. What he can become cannot change his appearance. I remember that child recently fell ill. The wife said, I think he is going to the back mountain. There is a mountain behind Yuking village. If there are any dead villagers in the village, they will be buried there, and the ancestral graves of the Zhu family are also there. Hearing this, her mother in law sighed. Not to mention, it's a pity that even the second son of the Zing family passed away and left the child alone. It's really pitiful. This is just gossip between mother in law and daughter in law, and while they are talking, Zhu Tingxiang has taken Hezi into the back mountain. The back mountain is called the back mountain, which means the mountain behind the Yuking village. The mountain is nameless and the mountain is not high, but it is very deep. Anyway, so far, no villager has been able to walk back and forth from this mountain, and most of them are just working in the periphery of the mountain. The Zhu family's ancestral grave is built on a hill not far from the village. The Zhu family is not only the Zhu Tingxiang family, but the ancestors of the entire Zhu clan are buried here. At the middle of such a big mountain are the graveyards of the clan leader's family, which spreads out into branches of various families. The graveyards of Father Zhu's family is located at the foot of the southwest mountain, because the couple both died young and Zhu Tingxiang died of a terrible disaster. They were buried at the edge of these graveyards. When Zhu Tingxiang got to the place, he began to pull up the grass around the grave. There were not many weeds. He had just cleaned them during the spring festival. He gathered the grass on the ground at will and sat down around the grave. On a piece of land in this mountain, there are two small graves, each of which stands a small blue stone tablet, on which the names of the couple are written. This tablet was laid down by Zhao at that time. There are three kinds of people who cannot erect a monument after death those who die accidentally, those who die young, and those who have no children. Zhu Qing Song died in an accident. Although no one said anything openly, they all felt that people who had suffered an accident had grievances after death, which was not conducive to geomancy in their ancestral graves, so they did not erect a monument. People also want him to forget who he is and avoid causing trouble. But at the same time, there is also a saying that there is no monument after death is a lonely ghost, cannot stand the incense of future generations. At the beginning, the funeral of the couple was run by the Zhu family, and they followed the old custom by default. At that time, Zhu Tingxiang was still young and didn't know anything about it, but Zhao understand. She talked to the Zhu family about erecting a monument, but it was stopped, and the Zhu family took turns to persuade them. Later, Zhao stopped talking about it and took the money to find someone to make these two simple tablets and stand them in front of the grave. By the time the Zhu family knew it was already late, they could not tear down the monument in front of the villagers. They could only regard it as no such thing. After all, they were still ashamed at that time. The villagers were also surprised to see the monument, but they understood when they thought about the death reason of the second child of the Zhu family. Therefore, Zhu Qingshan also fell a good name, would rather fight to ruin the family's geomancy, to erect a monument to his brother, is really benevolent and righteous. This matter would not be mentioned at this time. With all kinds of thoughts in his mind, Zhu Tingxiang took out a piece of cloth from his arms and slowly wiped the tombstone. The handwriting above is still written by him, and his handwriting is so mature that one can still tell what is written on it in the end. Today is the anniversary of the death of Father Zhen, Zhen who brought his two sons to the grave to worship. Country folk and not sofa today, only prepared some steamed bread, wine and meat and so on. After the father and his two sons burned paper money in front of the grave, the worship ended. Zhen whose father always had deep feelings, so he was inevitably depressed, so he let his two sons go back first, while he sat in front of the grave smoking tobacco while talking to his father. After talking for a while, he stood up and was ready to go back. There was still work to be done in the field. Zhen who did not want to waste time so he planned to take a shortcut. When he passed near Zulai Yangxing's ancestral grave, he suddenly heard someone crying. There are graves on the two hills near here, surname Zhu on one side and surname Zheng on the other. This is neither a new year nor a holiday. If it were not the anniversary of the death of an elder like Zheng Hu, no one would have come to such a place. In particular, there may be many dead people buried here, the trees are dense, and sometimes it is gloomy during the day. Hearing this strange sound, Zheng Hu was frightened and his legs were a little weak. After decades of living, he listened intently and quietly, and it took a long time to understand that it was a boy's voice. Thinking about whose grave it was, he ventured closer, went around a big tree, and saw in the distance a young man in sign sitting in front of the grave. There is also a big black dog swinging its tail. It is the dog of Zhu Liangxing's second wife. Zheng Hu breathed a sigh of relief, and the voice was carefully heard in his ears, Dad, what should I do? Uncle wants to send Brother Junkie to the school in town. I thought I could go, too. But when my aunt came to home a few days ago, she told me to let Brother Junkie go. But... The voice of the teenager was full of hesitation and confusion. Zheng Hu did not expect to hear the private affairs of the Zhu family in such a place. He was so surprised that he didn't know the smoke in his hand left. He didn't react until his foot was hit by the tune of smoking, and then hurriedly picked up the tune and left. He didn't know that the lonely child stopped crying after he left. These days, Zhu Tingxiang has been looking for an appropriate opportunity, and then suddenly thought of Zheng Hu. Zheng Hu's father died in spring plowing, not at the end of his life, but in an accident. He was accidentally squeezed by his own cow under the ridge of the field and died. The ridge of the field was not very high, and countless villagers fell off the field every year, but Father Zheng died unluckily. There was a lot of buzz about it in the village for a while, so Zhu Tingxiang remembered it very well. Since it is the anniversary of his father's death, Zheng Hu, as a son, will certainly come to the grave, and Zheng Hu is used to taking shortcuts, so he will certainly pass through this area, so there is no one more suitable than him. The most important thing is that the Yuking village looks small, but Zhu family and Zheng family have been competing with each other secretly for a long time. Zheng Hu's uncle is village head when Zheng Hu knows, the village head Zheng knows. Zhu Tingxiang didn't stay much and soon went home with Hezi. The courtyard was still silent. He found a stool and put it in front of the door. He sat there quietly enjoying the sunshine, thinking that Zhao Hu had gone to town. Zheng Hu trotted all the way and went to village head Zheng's home without even going home. Yuking village head Zheng is also the clan leader of Zheng clan. The house of the family is naturally unique in Yuking village. However, the house of the clan leaders who can be compared with it. Here are all green brick houses, and the courtyard walls are also made of green bricks. The most conspicuous one is the ancestral temple of Zheng family. However, this ancestral temple will not be open until a specific time, and the two black Paul near doors are closed all the year round. Go around to the side, and that's the courtyard of village head Zheng's house. The yard is very large, unlike other barns, barns, stoves, etc. are all in the front yard. Village head Zheng's front yard
Tian shook his head, thinking that something might have happened, because Zheng Hu was always calm. When Zheng Hu went in, he turned to the East Room. Sure enough, his uncle village head Zheng was sitting crossly on the bed in the East Room smoking a tobacco. Why are you in such a hurry? Zheng Hu sat down on a stool under the bed, gasping for breath, unable to speak for a moment. Village head Zheng looks in his sixties, with a long face and medium-sized eyes. Judging from his appearance, he is just an ordinary banker, and even the clothes he wears are ordinary. Only the motionless composure, at first glance, looks like a man of sophistication. With a cigarette holder in his mouth, he pushed forward the teapot on the table of the bed. Zheng Hu was at ease, stood up and poured a bowl of tea and drank it. Uncle, let me tell you something happened today. What's the matter? Today is the anniversary of my father's death. I took it early in the morning. In the middle of village head Zheng, Zheng Hu sat up from the bed and listened attentively. Seeing his uncle's reaction, Zheng Hu knew he was right. After hearing the words of the only son of Zhu Liangxing's second wife, he realized that this was an opportunity, an opportunity to suppress Zhu's prestige in Yiping village. He spoke in more detail, repeating almost every word, while village Zheng was smoking a tobacco and his eyes narrowed. Zhao didn't come back until the afternoon. When she came back, she looked a little pale. Zhu Tixiang looked at the basket behind her. Every time Zhao came back, it was always full, but today he knew there was nothing in it. What's the matter? Zhao was thinking, when she was asked by the little man, she was stupefied for a moment, and then said, Nothing. I brought you meat buns from town. I'll heat them up for you to eat later. How can it be nothing? It must have something. Zhu Tingxiang glanced at her, but since she didn't want to say any more, he didn't want to ask questions. Zhao went back and forth to the town, covered with dust. She went to the kitchen to boil water and took a bath in the bathroom. The Zhu family has a special room to take a bath in the vegetable field in the backyard. The house is small, three meters square. The ground is covered with bluestone. There is a sewer in the corner, and the bath water can flow directly along the mouth into the vegetable field. Zhao took off her clothes and rubbed soap on her body, but a burst of sadness came to mind. In fact, something really happened, but she didn't say it because she was afraid that he would be worried. She managed to find a way to get the money and was robbed. The robber was none other than the boss of embroidery workshop who took Zhao's embroidered shoes. In fact, Zhao is quite clever, bought rags from the owner of this embroidery workshop, but the finished product is not sold to this one, but changed to another one. It's just that she didn't expect that the two bosses were relatives, and she didn't know how they knew about it. But when she went there again, they didn't want to sell her rags anymore. Not only does this embroidery shop have no rags, the owner of this embroidery workshop also ordered people to buy all the rags of other embroidery shops. Zhao didn't know about it until she went to many embroidery shops. She is ready to pay for him to study in town at her own expense. She has asked about the king's school, which costs five tails of silver of the remuneration to teachers a year. Among them, because many students live too far away, they can choose to live in schools. If the school children live in school, the monthly food and accommodation fees will be added together, and one tail of silver will also be required. Zhao wanted Zhu Tixian to live at school. She felt that the Zhu family was not a good place to study. There were too many troubles in the family. That is to say, she had to prepare six tails of silver to send him to school. She had thought that she would be able to raise enough money in a few times of the business, but this thing happened. Thinking that Zhao had already taken a bath, she wrapped her hair in a veil and dress before she went back to the house. Zhu Tingxiang was sitting on the bed reading a book, which was his only book called The Instructions for Preschool Education he had. When he saw her coming in, he looked up at her and said, It's still cold, so dry your hair quickly. Hearing this, Zhao was a little moved. These days the he had changed a lot compared with before, this change was naturally good, so although she was worried, she could not help showing a smile. She climbed onto the bed and took a cloth towel out of the cabinet of the bed. Zhu Tingxiang sat on the side and inevitably gave way to her. As she passed by, a sweet smell of soap crept into his nose. He could not help moving his nose, his eyes fell on her, and he was close to her. Her hair was dark and dense, reaching her waist. She pinched her hair to one side of her neck, and sat on her bed with her head slightly tilted. Her hair hung down, and she was combing it. The girl was wearing a lilac-colored floral jacket and a pair of dark purple broad leg pants. She straightened her waist and tilted her neck to avoid wetting her clothes. She did it subconsciously, but made Zhu Tingxiang's heart beat fast, as if the blood is about to run out of his vein. No reasons, just because this gesture clearly showed her figure. The high chest and round hips with a slender waist. Zhu Tingxiang had never seen this. A strange sense of heat rose inside his body, but it was not unfamiliar to him. A picture of them kissing in bed surfaced in his head. He didn't like her in his dream, but it seemed reasonable to marry her. This kind of feeling was rooted in his heart. She should be his wife. Hidden in darkness, this kind of feelings were clouded by his awkwardness and ignorance. Especially after he went to the school, the fact that he had a child bride was laughed by his study mates. But he liked her deeply in the heart, so that night, she tossed her well. He was ignorant himself, and it was her first time. He felt bad when she was in pain, but he could not stop. She cried with tears and runny nose. That was the first time she was so weak in front of him, and since then he had fallen in love with this way of bullying her. At that time he boarded at school and could only come back every ten days. Every time he came back, she was afraid of him and hid herself. But she had to let him get what he wanted. He liked it, but refused to admit it. Looking back now, he was indeed a bastard. Thinking of these messes, he suddenly said, Let me wipe it for you. Zhao looked at him in surprise, and subconsciously refused. No, I will do it by myself after these days teaching and correction. She had slowly learned not to refer to herself as sister. Her words hadn't completed. Zhu Tingxiang had already taken the cloth towel and pulled her back in front of him. Zhao froze there and let him wipe her hair. Frankly, Zhu Tingxiang is still a little shorter than Zhao, so he had to kneel down to reach her. The two were so close that Zhu Tingxiang felt that his blood was violent, but Zhao didn't notice. Sensed it may be too hard for him to keep stretching arms, Zhao said, What if I lie on my stomach? She tried. Indeed, it was more convenient for him, and neither of them was tired. What she didn't know was that her body from behind was even more sultry, especially for a fledgling teenager. Zhu Tingxiang immediately regretted. He felt it was a kind of torture to keep himself from looking at her. Would you sit up? He asked. She didn't answer. She was asleep. The girl seemed tired and slept soundly. She lay prone on top of long quilts, her thick long hair spread behind her, down to her waist. Her face was a little deformed against the quilt, but her pink lips curled up. With a little water vapor on her face after bath, her full and delicate cheeks seemed young and tender at first glance. The pink lips were watery and attracting. There was something clamoring in his heart. He unconsciously leaned on her. He leaned closer and closer, so close that he could feel her sweet smell. Suddenly, she moved, and he quickly backed away, pretending nothing happened, and murmured how she fell asleep. But in fact, he was watching her reaction nervously. Fortunately, she moved a bit, and there was no sign of waking up, so he eased. But the impulse in his heart was gone. He glanced at her several times, reached for a thin bedding, and covered on her, then continued wiping her wet hair. Yuking Village was originally a village built by a group of victims who fled during the war in the former dynasty. At first, it was not called Yuking Village, but Zhang's Village, because the whole village was under the surname of Zheng. Not many, just a dozen of them. Many years passed. There was a disaster here, and the government arranged a group of refugees to settle here. These people are the ancestors of the Zhu's family. There are not many people with the surname Zheng, and there are many people with the surname Zhu. At first, the people with the surname Zheng dominated the village, but they turned against each other afterwards. In Dachin Dynasty, a hundred
fighting for as the leading position in the village. Because a scholar of the village was from Zeus' family, several Zeus people was elected as village old. Although this grew the power of Zeus' family, the village head was always under the surname of Jen. Now there are one village head and four village old in Yuking village, among which three of the four village old are from Zeus' family, so this is two versus three. But the village head is from Zhang's family, Zeus' family is still not in dominant position. The clan leader Zhu is confident that if there were another scholar in the clan, he will definitely overwhelm the Zhang's family, so when he heard the rumors in the village these two days, he immediately went mad. Grandpa Zhu was called to the clan leader's house when he was still working in the farm. The clan leader's face was as black as a pot. Grandpa Zhu was confused, hazy. What was going on actually? In terms of seniority, the clan leader is Grandpa Zhu's brother. You ask me? You don't know the rumors. Well, he really doesn't. Seeing this, the clan leader told him the whole story with a black face. Nobody knew how, the rumor of Zhu's family spread outside. It all started when someone saw Zhu Dazi, the only son of Zhu's family's second child, crying in front of his father's grave. No one knew exactly what he was crying about, but a kid young as him would express his depression this way was enough to prove that he was not equally treated in the family. Later, someone who knew the truth revealed that the big brother of Zhu's family planned to send his son to study in the town, but not his nephew. Everybody in the village knew how the second child of Zhu's family died. Many people were there when Zhu King's son was dying. They also saw how he took Zhu King's hand and made him promise that he will treat his son well. Coming back from the Zhu's family, a lot of people discussed how miserable Zhu King's son was to leave his sick wife and young child behind. No wonder he wouldn't close eyes until his brother made the promise. Now such rumors spread out, and the scene of Zhu King's son's death went rival in the village. Some old people shook their heads inside that people are unpredictable, and that you can never trust others with your wife and child. You treat him as your brother and even died for him, but he doesn't treat you son as his son. Even Zhu Tingxiang's status in the Zhu's family over the past few years were discussed by the women in the village. For example, Gaozi rarely show up in front of people, but every time he was seen in old and shabby clothes. Zhang Kei, the big brother's son, never wore old clothes. Even the things in private schools were spread to the grown-ups by those ignorant kids. Zhu Zhang Kei has a full set of pens, ink, paper, and ink stones, and he has the most books in the school. Zhu Gaozi, on several occasions, was seen writing on the bookcase with water. Indeed, everyone is biased, and there's nothing wrong about protecting your own son. But Zhu Qingxian's brother died for him. It's so cruel of him to be biased on this occasion. At this age, you still can't manage your family affairs. It's okay for you to be partial to your oldest son, but you shouldn't let everyone know it. What should we do about this now? Old as Grandpa as he was, his face blushed for embarrassment. He knew this is not a small deal. If he doesn't tackle well, his family reputation is over. I can lose my reputation, my oldest son can't. If he was known as being cold to his dead brother's son, he is completely over. Not to mention being a scholar, his private school may be hard to manage. Hazy, he looked to the clan leader for help, because he had no idea in his mind. You should send both of the children to private schools in town, to stop the gossip. Grandpa Zhu's face went even redder. He rubbed his rough hands and said, You know Hazy, in order to provide for the oldest son, there's no money left in the family. I want to send both of them, but I can't afford it. Hearing this, clan leader Zhu also frowned. He knew clearly how Zhu Qingxian went to King's school. That place is really expensive, and you can't argue with them, because a lot of people are willing to pay for it. The year's study will at least cost 20 tails of silver. Zhu Qingxian studied there for five years. The clan leader was about to help him gather some money if he can't afford it, but now he stopped talking. Zhu Zhenke was still young, and his future was still unknown, especially that two of the grandchildren in his family were all studying and needing money. They were not wealthy. Just don't let any of them go. Is that okay, Grandpa? Zhu whispered. Clan leader Zhu sneered. That's exactly what they say about you. You don't treat the son of the dead well. If you don't want to ruin your oldest son's reputation and destroy the future of Junkei, you should either send both of them or just send the son of your second son. Coming out of clan leader's house, Grandpa Zhu was completely stunned. He shook his hand and touched his waist a few times before taking off his cigarette bag. He didn't go any further, but squatted under a tree by the road and lit up the tobacco. He slowed down towards home, and a lot of people greeted him along the way. Normally, he would feel proud for them greeting him, but now, he felt as if they were all smiling at him on the face, but laughing at him behind the back. He forced himself to go back, and then another acquaintance came. He smiled and asked, Why did you come back from the farm so early today? Grandpa Zhu could not take it anymore. He pulled this person to the side of the tree and said, Old Joe, tell me the truth. How is the people in this village talking about my family now? This old man is also dark skinned, but he is shorter than Zoo, and his back is a bit rickety. Hearing this, he gave Grandpa Zoo a subconscious look, and then sighed for a long time. I thought you knew. What? How could I know the first sentence almost came out of the teeth, and the second one was full of resignation? Having lived so many years, old Joe said he understand this old buddy, but he didn't know what to say, just said seriously, don't worry too much. They just had nothing else to do other than gossip about others. But don't blame me for being talkative. The thing you did was really, he sucked his teeth and looked like he was licking his mouth. Not appropriate. Not appropriate. He might only say these out of their relationship. Behind him, nobody knows how people are scolding him. The clan leader just told him that the rumor was ugly outside, but he didn't say how they said it. Zhu asked, exactly what did they say? Just tell me. Old Joe sighed before he said what he knew. Since everything was open, he didn't think there was anything he couldn't say. It's not that I'm blaming you. You're a father. You should manage this stuff. Don't forget how your second son died. Doing this will certainly attract scolding. Grandpa Zhu looked pale and whispered, it had nothing to do with my oldest son. It was my wife and my decision. Old Joe raised his eyelids and looked at the old man, and then he didn't intend to say anything else. He was afraid if he said this, the relationship between the two should be broken. Anyway, you have to think about it. I have to go home. You can go to my house, and I will have some drink with you. No, there is something else at home. After old Joe left, Grandpa Zhu stood for a while and went home. As soon as he entered the house, Zhu Qingxian stood in the courtyard and asked, Dad, what did Grandfather tell you? Grandpa Zhu looked at his son without a word, and entered the main room. Zhu Qingxian was confused, and he wanted to ask his youngest brother what happened. At this time, Mrs. Joe called everyone for dinner in the kitchen. Everyone went out and he could not ask. At dinner, Grandpa Zhu kept a straight face. Since Zhu Tingxiang could get out of bed, he no longer had dinner in his own room, but with everyone. The atmosphere on dinner table was so serious that the naughty maid who liked to make trouble at dinner table was afraid to speak today. After the meal, Mrs. Joe and Zhu Tower cleared the table and went to wash the dishes. Others were planning to leave, but they were stopped by Grandpa Zhu. Kingshan and your wife stay here. I need to talk to you. Gaozi stays. Others go back to your room. 